Now that we should have a pretty good grasp of Newton's laws, so the first, second, and third law, we're going to start adding the old stuff with it. So kinematics, the kinematic equations are coming back, and we're going to start combining those with forces. And I'm going to start with this example. We have a 14 kilogram boat that has two engines. The driver of the boat pushes down on the throttle to accelerate the boat. One engine provides 2,000 newtons of force, and the other provides 1,600 newtons of force. There is also a 1,500 newton frictional force from the water. How long will it take the boat to travel 50 meters if it starts from rest? So we'll draw our diagram. We have the water, and we've got our boat. Clearly not a sailboat, but I'm just going to draw a sailboat. Moving along in the water. Listing what we know. Mass of the boat is 1,400 kilograms. It's got two engines. Both of those engines are providing a force. They're both assumingly also providing the force in the same direction. So we're going to have a total force from the engines of 3,600 newtons. And I'm just going to call that F engine. So 2,000 newtons plus 1,600 newtons means we have a total force from the engines of 3,600 newtons. We know that the frictional force is 1,500 newtons. We know that the boat starts from rest, so the initial is 0 meters per second. And we know that it travels 50 meters, so delta x is 50 meters. Given all of that, we are looking for how long it takes the boat to travel that far, so how long means we're looking for time. First thing we want to do is now draw a force diagram for the boat. Gravitational force going down, normal force going up, those are equal because the boat is not accelerating up or down. Going to the right, from the way I drew my diagram, since the boat is traveling to the right, we're going to have the force of the engines. And going to the left will be a frictional force. This should be shorter for two reasons. One, the acceleration is directed towards the right. And two, just looking at the numbers, 1,500 newtons is less than 3,600 newtons. So filling in these values, we know the force from the engines was 3,600 newtons. We know that the frictional force is 1,500 newtons. And then it gave us the mass, uh, 1,400 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Fg is 1,000, sorry, 13,720 newtons. And Fn is also 13,720 newtons. So we found all the forces on the force diagram. Now let's figure out what we're looking for in the end, time. We know that time is going to be through one of the kinematics equations, and we know that in order to find time, you're probably going to need acceleration. So what we need the force diagram for is figuring out net force. Net force is equal to top minus bottom, or right minus left. So in this case, since there's no acceleration here, we need to use the horizontal. So from this force diagram, F net is going to equal the force of the engines minus the frictional force. So this is equal to 3,600 newtons minus 1,500 newtons. Um, F net equals 2100 newtons. Once I have net force and mass, I can find acceleration using A equals F net over M. So acceleration equals 2100 newtons divided by 1400 kilograms. And this equals 1.5 newtons per kilogram. And again, newtons per kilogram is the same unit as meters per second squared. When dealing with kinematics, 
usually it makes more sense to use acceleration in meters per second squared. So now we know the acceleration. We were given delta x and we were given the initial velocity. We have three kinematic equations to choose from, and just a reminder in case you forgot. First one is delta x equals one half a t squared plus v initial t. The second one is v final equals v initial plus a t. And the third one, v final squared equals v initial squared plus two a delta x. Based on what we're given, in this case we have acceleration, we have v initial, and we're looking, I'm sorry, we have delta x. Looking for time, we want to use this equation. So delta x equals one half a t squared plus v initial t. My v initial was zero, that term goes away. Isolating for t, two delta x over a equals t squared. 2 times 50 meters divided by 1.5 meters per second squared equals t squared. So 100 divided by 1.5 gives me 66.6 repeating. Units with that are seconds squared equaling t squared. Square root of 66.6 repeating. We get 8.16 keeps on going seconds for time. 1 sig fig t is about 8 seconds. So we used what we've learned all year um, and combined it all into one problem, looking at Newton's second law, finding acceleration using the force diagram. Once we had acceleration, going back to kinematics, looking at the three kinematics equations, deciding which one it made sense to use based on what we were given, and then going to solve. I'll do one more example, and this example will be from worksheet three. So I'm going to do one of those if you're interested um, in watching that. Otherwise, we'll have time to work on this in class. So this next problem is number one from worksheet three. and tells us that a race car has a mass of 710 kilograms. It starts from rest and travels 40 meters in three seconds. The car is uniformly accelerated during the entire time. How big is the net force acting on the car? So diagram, we have our car starting from rest, and then it's accelerating. Given, we know that the mass is 710 kilograms. We know that it starts from rest, so the initial is zero meters per second. It travels 40 meters, that would be my delta x, in three seconds, so time is three seconds. And we are looking for the net force. So drawing a force diagram for the car, we have Fg going down, Fn going up, not accelerating in the y direction, so those two forces are equal. Going to the right, just call it a contact force accelerating, so it can be the contact force between the wheels and the road. And going to the left, we're going to have friction. So we know that the net force will equal the mass times the acceleration. We have mass and we do not have acceleration. However, given V initial, delta x, and t, we have what we need to find acceleration using kinematics. The equation it makes most sense to use is delta x equals 1 half a t squared plus V initial t. Starts from rest, so that term goes to zero. Isolating for acceleration, we get 2 delta x over t squared equaling a. So 2 times 40 meters divided by 3 seconds squared equals acceleration. This gives us 8.8 .8 keeps on going meters per second squared for a. Now that we have acceleration, we can find net force using 
F net equals MA. So F net equals the mass, 710 kilograms, times the acceleration, unrounded, 8.8, .8, keeps on going, meters per second squared. Multiplying those together, we get 6,311.1, keeps on going, newtons, and two sig figs. So net force is about 6,300 newtons. The problem tells us in bold to make a quantitative force diagram. We actually don't have enough information, so that is a typo. Um, there's not enough information to make the force diagram quantitative because we don't know the frictional force and we don't know what that contact force is causing the car to accelerate. All we know is that the sum of those forces, if you take right minus left, is 6,300 newtons. So we'll do more practice with this. You can expect a lot of problems having kinematics uh, blended in with the forces. So if you don't feel comfortable using those three kinematics equations, you have to go back, uh, look at it again, or see me for help.